of my primary interests as, as a teacher, as a student, as a mother, uh, as a colleague is, is uh, trying to figure out how we can generate long-term qualitative change for exponential development. And I'm going to unpack that. Long-term qualitative change for exponential development. In my own practice as an artist and as academician, I uh, teach workshops, labs, performances on science of transformation and art of fulfillment. What I'm talking about is a kind of individual and collective scalable spectral a guidance system for sense making. My colleagues from previous sessions were saying some exceptional things in, in a session that was um, up there, like Anne Snick and others. So it will be amazing to just listen to them and I feel fulfilled already in what I'm doing. But the sense of how do we entice and bring forth a sense of higher perspective coupled with deep knowing, with finer sensing for the broadest base impact. I mean, this is a huge uh, framework to, to address and capacity to build. And in that process to be truthful to the science and equally to the, to the art, I speak of transcendent equations, right? And algorithms of success that catches people quickly, meaning that you have a sequence of actions that you apply that lead to a desired goal. And there are steps that we can apply in order to achieve where we, where, and we, we want to be and accomplish what we want to accomplish individually and collectively. Interestingly enough, in order to produce or generate higher results, we need to apply higher principles, right? Now we're hearing more about systems thinking, complexity theory. We understand that we have to elevate and deepen simultaneously our capacity for thinking and visioning in order to be able to rise above the ground. First of all, to be safe in this, in the uh, climate change world, climate aware world, I guess, but equally to understand what kind of solution we can generate. So what are the laws, the measures, and the results that determine the worth, the price, the meaning of anything and everything? Typically, those are qualities, properties of a system, if you want to speak scientific language, uh, that are characterized by paradox. This will be a different kind of property that you have to have in order to have higher form of accomplishment, which means that you have to apply principles that are guided by paradoxical logic. What do I mean by that? You have to apply properties that multiply by division. What are the qualities that actually have a different capacity to multiply by division? Not, they're not governed by ordinary laws. Those values such as trust, beauty, integrity, authenticity, compassion, self-giving in the world are that kind. How do you test certain values that you are applying in the world by their application? If they do not produce a counter effect, then you know you are applying something truthful to the very essence of the property and principle you are applying. If they do, then we're lacking in the capacity to apply them properly. Even the notion of justice and freedom, if it is not freedom for all, and if it's not equalizingly uh, 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 elevating all, even beyond our human notion of justice, then we're going to have a problem. What does that mean? That means that if you apply justice that is so radical and only based on the human or on the physical laws, you are going to have a counter reaction. Typically, we have seen that in revolutions that are very justified in how they're applied, right? But what they produce in reverse is scary, right? Equally. So, Paradox is what guide, guides these qualities, right? Inclusivity, such as unity and diversity, the, the motto of the World Academy, is what defines these, these qualities. They are integral and in approach and effect. They have integrating capacities. They're co-evolving and mutually productive amongst themselves. They're balancing and harmonizing. My colleague Leora Weinbach spoke about a capacity that we're naturally wired to harmonize. We want to be seen. We want to be approved of, 
right? And that she's playing into that quality. They're also exponential, as I mentioned earlier. And if you don't trust me, speak to Rodolfo Fiorini, who can actually build mathematical models for you to tell you that. Because they are not additive, not cumulative. They're multiplicative in an exponential way, which means that they're transformational. As you up-level something, it changes the very quality of, 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 the, of the process and the person that applies it, or the, the element, if you will. I'm intentionally using scientific language. So transformation is the process now of the conversion of values, of the conversion of energies and principles that are then revealing to us what is worthy, what, I, what is worth, what is wealth, what is wisdom, what is well-being. We have, and I'll be quickly running through a model that we all know, which is Maslow's model of needs, which is this triangle that leads um, upward, and we, I don't have to talk about that, we all know. But I have recently got the, the joy to work with an, an amazing, wonderful Richard Barrett, who has added a whole other up, you know, downward facing triangle into um, adding a whole series of aspirations to the needs and the realization of needs. So I would highly recommend that you look at the uh, uh, work of some of my colleagues that I mentioned. So what happens here in the domain of the Ma Maslowian discussion, the needs lead to a uh, realization of, of an ambition or an aspiration. But we have seen people come from excruciating conditions, 27 years of prison and deprivation without aspiration being untouched. In fact, being activated at the highest possible level. Who am I speaking about? Nelson Mandela. Not only was he a uh, at, at 27 years of deprivation of basic needs, he emerged and actually launched his mission on a global level, becoming an ideal, uh, a role model of a certain um, fulfillment, right? An accomplishment, uh, an incomparable accomplishment. So what happens in the domain of needs is that even, even when it's up-leveled, it leads to ambition. But ambition is about doing and having. And aspiration is about becoming, about being. The ambition and the needs are about repetitive, typically just temporary, unfulfillable. You're hungry. You eat. You're hungry again. But the notion of fulfilling and the notion of uh, effluence comes from the domain of aspiration. And it's multi exponentially multiplies because when you are fulfilled, you are moved to create conditions to uncork the fulfillment of others. That's fascinating. That's a different law. The needs and the, are the domain of resources. This is aspirations of the domain and the values of the domain of creative forces. The needs are always first and foremost satisfied on the individual. The aspirations always want to uncork the individual with significance to the collective. The needs are always based primarily focused on creating and teaching skills. The aspirations are of engendering values that multiply exponentially in an inclusive, integral way. Values are nurtured in a social context for their integrative nature. Right? Skills can be learned by anybody, by themselves, to a degree with an instrument or a tool. They're amassing and they're about combinatorics. But the values are nurtured only amongst ourselves. We need each other to be, to be able to do this. And this space of needing each other is the space of interbeing, co-becoming, and in-belonging. So my primary interest, and I'm approaching the end of... of of this convert or this sharing with you is that to speak to teach children of values as my colleague Srijit uh, who comes from Global Institute for Integral Management Studies based on the on the teaching and guidance and consultancy of Gary Jacobs which is a great point of pride for us at the World Academy he has shown on in his very school what happens when you invest so much he's an investor in an educational model that is so focused on fulfilling needs, fulfilling the needs of the part market, fulfilling employability needs without refining values, without uncorking, not only for satisfying this, but uncorking the limitless potential for development. I want to take this a step further and maybe just put this on the table with you. Not only teaching values, 
But because they're interconnected, integral, inclusive, and they're mutually product, co-productive, right? Then we need to also teach people and ourselves first about the capacity to convert values. This is where we, we have multiple yields, right, in the transmutative process. And finally, um, I want to speak about this process of conversion. Really and typically, it, it involves, typically it involves what we have learned from Maslow, the point at which we go from needs to aspirations, right? But nobody speaks about that threshold. Nobody speaks of where is the threshold where somehow your needs are satisfied and then you're kind of, you know, squished upward or squeezed upward, catapulted somehow individually or socially into the domain of higher aspirations and ideals. I'm not so sure that we've modeled that very well. But what I do know that sometimes uh, it induces sense of unrest, dis-ease, boredom, distaste, anxiety. Maybe if we think about our own processes this way, about the processes of our students, about the processes of our colleagues, maybe we will be in, imbued with empathy to understand that we now can appreciate those threshold sensations and sentiments in order to recognize that they're transformational tightening before the expansion, and that we will appreciate more the process of evolutionary learning, which for me is initiatory learning meaning attending to the phases and processes of life and life's intelligence. So, in terms of long-term qualitative change for exponential development, we are basic individual and collective needs, our values.